uh, Jesus was saying to them, listen, I know that you're fearful of what leaders may do in the community and what others may do. You have peace that I'm alive, but I'm also commissioning you that you can have peace in sharing the gospel. Praise God. There can be peace for us to share the gospel with others because it comes from Christ and the knowledge that He is alive and we can have peace because we've been commissioned not by ourselves or not from Miracle Revival Church, but we've been ordained from the throne room of heaven to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others and we can experience the peace, Brother Doug, as you shared with us. Your, your, your friends, and, and, and all of us with our friends, no matter who we can share. And the Bible says, and when he had thus said, he breathed on them. Amen. This is a, a, a wonderful thing that is happening here as, as he begins to breathe on them. Uh, let me just say this. Let me jump back here for just a moment. So he is saying peace to them. He breathes on them now. It is, it is typifying what happens back in the book of Genesis where man is just a vessel of clay, but, but God breathes in him, the, the, in the nostrils of him, and he breathes in life. Now God is breathing through his son Jesus Christ. And he is breathing, and it is the Spirit of God that is breathing uh, in, in, in them an awareness and a newness. I believe that these men are saved because of their relationship, but because of the power of the resurrection, they need the Holy Ghost to make it real to them. And that's the breath of life that's being breathed into them. What did Jesus say uh, in, in John chapter 4, verse number 44? He said that no man can come unto him except the Father uh, which sent me draw him. How does the Father draw? Through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. He draws by that. And so this is the Spirit of God that is quickening and making things real in them. Now, I don't want to upset anyone's theology, but I believe this with all my heart. I believe that when you get saved, there is a portion of the Holy Ghost that is imparted in you. That is the Spirit of God. Jesus now lives in your heart. That's the Spirit of God. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I believe that there's something greater. He, 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 the, the Bible says, uh, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Uh, and, and so uh, 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 he's making it possible for what the Holy Ghost does at salvation. But there is also that of the Holy Ghost that is going to be sent in Acts chapter number 2. That is going to be given to them as an indwelling that's going to empower them, that's going to that comfort them. And it's going to be given, and the sign evidence of that is they're going to speak in other tongues as is given in Acts chapter number 2 and follows throughout the book of Acts. And he says this, Whosoever sins you remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. Now, listen, no priest, no payment of money, uh, uh, not even by simply being sorry, will forgive our sins. It has to be so much more than that. That's the problem that I have when people say, well, I prayed to Saint so-and-so or I went to confession. You know, we don't need, there's things that we need to make right with others. But our confession needs to be from the Father. As we accept the work of Jesus Christ upon the cross who bore our sins. And as we preach the message of salvation of Christ upon the cross, sins can be remitted if the gospel message is received under the Spirit of God. But if it's rejected, sins will be retained. There's no other way to get rid of sins except for the blood of Jesus Christ. That word remit, does anyone know what that means? I'll tell you, it means to cancel from a debt or a punishment. Aren't you glad that Christ has given remittance for our sins? The debt that we owe is so great we could never pay. But He paid it. The punishment that we should have taken for sin, He took on the cross. I know that we hear that, it's simplistic and 
elementary, but never allow the elementary to stop being profound in our lives. I'm going to go down to the, the end of this section here. The Bible says that Thomas was not with him, called Didymus. At this point, um, Judas has already been replaced by Matthias, because remember, uh, uh, this is happening, the Gospel of John is be, being written many years afterwards. Uh, 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 so we, we see that uh, he's already been replaced. <coughs> and then when they come to uh, Thomas and they share, he said, I, I won't believe except I see uh, his hands, the print of the nail, and I put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. This is what I want to leave us with tonight. The problem with this world is that they do not believe. Tonight, every row in this sanctuary will be filled if throughout this battle, people believe. The problem is people are like Thomas. They do not believe. They can have knowledge of them, but until you believe in Christ and the power of the resurrection, it will leave you in a very empty, lonely, and peaceful state. Believe it. Believe it. We must believe that was the message that they preached in Acts. Believe. Anyone have any thoughts or comments tonight? I love this. I hope that in some way I'm presenting something to you that makes you love it and lets your appetite. <laughs> just John's gospel is just powerful. That's just all there is to it. It's a powerful gospel. I love it. Someone have something you want to share? Something I could could have forgotten. Or maybe it didn't even have to begin with. Yeah, but I just say it's interesting. When we study your war of my body, it's going to be a perfect state. You know, whatever the perfect age is, so forth and so forth. But when you look at Jesus Christ, and we always look about, talk about no more back pain, no more this, that. <coughs> How it will be perfect if you're missing an eye, and be completely dead. Christ chose any of the stars. see him presenting them to Dow and Thomas, but we'll also see him at the end of the ages presenting the scars to the Jews themselves, and when they ask him, where, where did you get that? I'm your, as our Messiah. Well, these are God in the house of my friends. Mm. And they will be that good once again. It's beautiful. It is beautiful, brother, and I'm with you. I'm amazed by that. That the God of this universe would not find it beneath him or when he choose to bear them as an emblem of his love for us. Wow. That's love. And we can just go on that and it just shows us how many how far God did it does go for us because there are so many things that he's done just to prove to us like he is when he said he was. Amen. He didn't have to roll away the stone and leave the gym acting like that. He left the stone perfectly there. He didn't have to leave the, the grave clothes the way they were. I mean, there's just so many things that he did that we might consider unnecessarily if we were to be in those positions, in his position, but yet he did it for us. As I Amen. He knew that we would need it, didn't he? Amen. Thank God for the evidence. The evidence. Other thoughts tonight? I was thinking um, when you said about um, with Mary and Emily, there was such an urgency. Like, um, Emily was my friend was talking to me, and they were, she said, the opportunity to present salvation because of the urgency. This man is dying. Urgency. Do you know what I mean? You push away all of the, those other things. Just like Mary Magdalene, she, this was urgent. There was she had nowhere else to go. She right. just needed to know. And it's like any one of us that are in a situation like that, you just grasp that whatever. You know, it's whatever sure. is there to grab right. because it is so urgent. It's mm -hmm. so passionate. Um, I just think it's, it's um, sometimes we need to just get that passion and, and not let go. Amen. Yeah, if we lose sound of Christ in our life, the urgency to find him. The urgency to share. Yeah. We knew if we looked at the frailty of life, the urgency.
emergency to share the gospel that's life changing would definitely affect us in a greater way. Mr. Richmond. Someone else. You know, I'm challenged by Mary. I don't want to be Peter. I don't want to be John. Although there's so much I admire about them. I want to stay until I find Christ. I don't want to just be... People can lose Christ in the middle of life. I mean, and people that... You know, we may look at and just think, man, they have it all together. They love the Lord. You know, we can't ride on yesterday's experience. There has to be an urgency for today to keep Christ. Um, we we got to find it. we got to find Him. Not be content with Him missing in areas of our life. But know that He is there. Seek Him. And not be distracted. You know, she was sorrowing. Life is full of sorrow. It cannot distract us from having Christ. Life is full of glorious things. There's phenomenal things. There's fun things. There's beautiful things. Just, but it can't distract us from finding Christ. We have to seek Christ. And when He speaks our word to us, Maybe it's collectively to hang around because soon it's going to be personal. Listen for him to speak your name. God is good. Let's stand tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for allowing me to share the gospel with you. Amen. I, I love the Lord. I'm so grateful for our church. I'm grateful for community of believers that Christ has given us here together. Hey, listen, we're not perfect. I'm a number one in the line for not being perfect. But uh, I'm sure glad that we can help each other on this side of heaven draw closer to Christ. Because we're not the middle stages. We'll be thankful for the investment that we made in our life to see the face of Christ. Amen. Brother Dennis, would you close us in prayer tonight? Lord, we thank you for your love and your time for us, Lord. We ask, Lord, as we study your word, Lord, you just help us, Lord, to retain it and help others come to draw close to you, Lord, and come to you. Give a safe trip to their home, bring us back on Sunday, Lord, we give our thanks, glory, and praise, and precious name of Jesus.